Hi, I'm Casey Pyle. I'm a practicing foot and ankle surgeon in Ventura, California. And I'm going to be discussing a case presentation today on a subtle Liz Frank injury and associated cuneiform fracture that we were able to help heal with the Arthrex internal brace and the IOBP and biosurge kit. So our case presentation is a 25-year-old male. He's an ER tech with no medical history. And he's very active, running, outdoor type individual. He was running in the ocean and had a significant twisting injury to his foot, and he presented to the emergency department. He initially was diagnosed with just a subtly displaced cuboid fracture. He was treated at an outside facility with a cam boot and was kept non-weight brain for several weeks with a gentle progressive return to activity. Upon resuming his activity, he found that he was having worsening pain in the outer part of his foot. Here is injury films. You can see the subtly displaced cuboid fracture with a well-preserved joint space, and then we see the avulsion injury off the lateral aspect of the navicular showing the comminution at the cuboid articulation. However, again, the joint space is well-preserved. You can also see the avulsion injury coming off of his navicular. After he went back to a period of rest and taking time off of his foot, his lateral foot pain did resolve, and the cuboid fracture progressed to healing. Then as he started to resume his activity again, he now found that he had sharp pain in the medial aspect of his foot and in the dorsum of his foot, which got worse with more vigorous activity, such as inclines, more impact activity, and uneven surfaces. At this point, he presented to my clinic where we evaluated him. We found that he was very tender to palpation at the 1-2 interval between the metatarsals and over the more lateral aspect of his midfoot and had some persistent swelling in that area. We obtained weight-bearing stress x-rays, which were otherwise equivocal, and I had then obtained an MRI. Here are the images from our clinic where you can see comparing to his left foot, there was very subtle discrepancy in terms of the space at Liz Frank's articulation. We don't see any obvious widening or shift of the second metatarsal relative to the intermediate cuneiform. On the MRI, this was obtained two months after his injury. We do see some edema in the ligamentous complex around Liz Frank's articulation between the base of the second metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. And then we also see a significant increase in signal at the lateral cuneiform. Here on the sagittal cuts, on the left side, you see the increased signal in the lateral cuneiform. And then on the right side, you can see the increased signal in the ligaments adjacent to the TMT articulation of the second metatarsal. Again, on the coronals, on the left, we see the change in signal in the lateral cuneiform. And on the right, we see the diffuse edema at the base of the second metatarsal and at the TMT articulation. To summarize this, it appears that he had a subtle Liz Frank injury at his initial injury that resulted in persistent instability in his medial midfoot. You can imagine how as when he's putting weight on his foot, this energy is being transmitted through Liz Frank's articulation, then out laterally into that lateral cuneiform, creating an insufficiency type fracture at his lateral cuneiform. I discussed these findings with him and we discussed our treatment options. He was concerned that he had been too aggressive and too vigorous with his return to activity and elected to proceed with some continued rest before proceeding with any more aggressive intervention. We did do this and then as he began to resume his activity, he found that his pain immediately returned both in the midfoot and over the Liz Frank articulation. At this point, we recommended surgical intervention. We recommended for him stabilization of his Liz Frank articulation utilizing the internal brace kit from Arthrex. And then we wanted to promote more reliable healing at that lateral cuneiform injury because he had been recalcitrant to rest and other traditional methods utilizing the biosurge kit. So you can see here on the right image where we would stabilize Liz Frank's articulation between the base of the second metatarsal and the medial cuneiform, and then also provide the optional intracuneiform stabilization. Here's our intraoperative image. We first stressed the foot under fluoroscopy while the patient was asleep and found that there was subtle widening at the Liz Frank joint. We then made our standard approach in the, through the one, two interval over the dorsum of the midfoot. After releasing just the dorsal tissue, we're able to easily pass a freer elevator through to the plantar surface, indicating instability at the Liz Frank joint. We also found that there was dorsal plantar instability at the one, two interval. And we also saw that this continued proximally into the intracuneiform space. We then harvested our bone marrow from the distal tibia and sent this off for processing. We localized the lateral cuneiform under fluoroscopy in order to do the interosseous bioplasty under a percutaneous technique. And you can see that here indicated with the X mark on the dorsum of the patient's foot. Here you can see under different angles of fluoroscopy how we localized within the lateral cuneiform. And we placed a guide wire into the cuneiform and over drilled this with a cannulated drill. We then inserted our syringe and injected our IOBP material into the lateral cuneiform to help promote more reliable healing. We then return to the stabilization of our Liz Frank injury by first removing some additional scar tissue at the base of the second metatarsal and then obtained an anatomic reduction and held this in place with a Weber. We confirmed this under orthogonal images and placed our guide wire in a retrograde fashion from the base of the second metatarsal to the medial cuneiform. We then over drilled the wire itself in the medial cuneiform and passed our button and suture tape material through the tunnel we'd created 
and secured this in place with a swivel lock. Since we found that there was intracuneiform instability as well, we passed the suture tape over the medial cuneiform and docked this into the intermediate cuneiform underneath the extensor tendons to help provide additional stability. Here you can see at our two-week post-op, his foot reduction looks excellent. And you can see the position of the button is ideal as there is significant soft tissue coverage over the dorsum of the foot, which would minimize the risk for soft tissue irritation with the metal implant. At our three-month post-op, you can see here on the weight-bearing views that we see no diastasis at the Liz Frank articulation. His foot is stable and he is pain-free. In conclusion, Liz Frank injuries represent a spectrum of severity and subtle Liz Frank injuries can be difficult to treat. Patients may not present initially because they think I had a more minor injury and then come to your clinic later, or it can be missed on initial evaluation entirely. I find that the Liz Frank kit from Arthrex with the internal brace is an excellent way to help stabilize these Liz Frank injuries in a minimally invasive technique. We also saw in this case a lateral cuneiform fracture that was recalcitrant to healing with traditional techniques. And we augmented that healing using the intraosseous bioplasty kit and the biosurge kit, and did this through a percutaneous technique that provided minimal morbidity to the patient. Thank you very much.